Okay. After we talked about uh, spinodal decomposition, let's now compare spinodal decomposition with the typical, the more common nucleation and growth process for the same types of solid state transformations such as precipitation. So this table compares nucleation growth in the middle column versus spinodal decomposition uh, in the right column in different aspects. Okay, and uh, let's look at them one by one. The first, the second row lists uh, the free energy versus composition curve. As we mentioned, for spinodal decomposition to happen, the second order derivative of Gibbs free energy versus composition curve has to be negative, which means the curve we are talking about has to be concave down portion only within that portion within the inflection point where the curve is concave down that spinodal decomposition will occur naturally on the other hand for nucleation growth it typically outside of the inflection points and in the section that the Second-order derivative of Gibbs free energy versus composition is positive or concave up sections. That's what we discussed before. And then, in terms of condition or requirement, we said spinodal decomposition does not really need a big thermal driving force. Instead, it just needs some minor composition fluctuation the local composition just differ a little bit due to statistical rearrangement but this composition local fluctuation will lead to the pro will initiate the process and able to occur until it finishes in comparison for Nucleation growth process to happen, it not only needs the local composition fluctuation, it also, in most cases, needs a critical supercooling, the or undercooling for precipitation case, which means the system temperature has to decrease to a value, critical value, below the equilibrium temperature to get enough driving force in order for the system to overcome the barrier, the nucleation barrier. Okay. And in terms of whether the phase transformation involves a distinct nucleus, as we mentioned, the spinodal decomposition, there's no nucleus formation. At the very beginning stage, you cannot really tell what part is a new phase and what part is a, the matrix or host phase. Well, for nucleation growth process, the new phase formed, it's very different from the matrix or the host and you can easily tell okay certain portion would be nucleus okay and uh, in terms of the composition change from the matrix to the new phase spinodal decomposition as we just said there's no real nucleus formation and the composition change from the host to the two relating the new phase are very very small initially at the very beginning it's just in almost impossible to tell the difference well for nucleus and growth the new phase formed quite often has a very very different uh, composition from the matrix of the host material and in terms of the structural change from the matrix to the new phase, spin nodal decomposition at the beginning stage, there's essentially no structural change. The two related phases ha must have the same crystal structure. The only difference comes from a very slight difference in terms of lattice parameter. Uh, 
which is very, very small. That's why we say essentially no change in structure. But for the nucleation growth process, the new nucleus or the precipitate that formed out of from the matrix quite often has very different lattice parameter. And in many cases also have very different crystal structure from the host or the matrix phase. And then, in terms of the existence of interface, distinct interface, for nucleation, for nucleation and growth process, the interface is very distinct or very sharp between the matrix phase and the uh, new phase or precipitate phase that formed. While for spinodal decomposition, the interface is diffuse and not really well defined. You find a gradual transition from one region to the other region. And it's exact difficult to pinpoint where it exactly is. Or even its existence at the very beginning. In terms of direction of diffusion, as we mentioned earlier, for spinodal decomposition, it involves uphill diffusion, which means the solute atom would prefer to go from low concentration region to the high concentration region. Well, for nucleation growth process, the within the same phase, the diffusion is always downhill from high concentration to low concentration region. Of course, at the interface, there will be the solute will be thrown from the low concentration region to high concentration region. But that process we typically do not call diffusion; we call them re chemical reaction or transformation. In terms of rate of transformation, the new uh, spinodal decomposition process, because it's a spontaneous process, the free energy rolls downhill is a very fast process, while nucleation growth process is typically slow. It's typically slow. You have to wait for the activation to overcome the um, nucleation barrier which takes time. And also at the same time, the diffusion also takes, solid state diffusion also takes time due to the very large difference in composition. And finally, in terms of precipitate size and the distribution, for spinodal decomposition, the precipitate of the new phase, they should have large number of precipitates. And each of them should be very small size. Typically, we're talking about around 10 nanometer. Well, for traditional nucleation growth, quite often we have a smaller number of precipitates, depending on the undercooling. If the undercooling is small, the nucleus density is very, very low. So you would have low number of precipitates, and each of them would grow to larger sizes. Of course, you may run into the situation that uh, you have a very large undercooling, and under those conditions, you may have large number of precipitates with smaller sizes. Okay, so this table nicely summarizes the difference between spinodal decomposition and the nu versus nucleation growth as two different ways to achieve solid state transformation such as precipitation in solid state okay